Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Tuesday. It's Transformational Tuesday here. And, oh, boy, what do we have? Demi's angered the Christians. Never a good time when Demi's angered the Christians, as you guys might know. Put this on your bingo charts. I was raised Catholic, and I'm going to get involved here and decide if she is the a-hole or not. Of course, on Easter Sunday, she wrote, She is risen. Hashtag God is woman. And then people were like, it's just no. Now look, hey, it's not a it's not a horrible uh, premise. Hey, God might be women. You know, you could you could look into that, but uh, we'll get into the the whole idea that as someone who doesn't even practice religion on an Easter Sunday, it's like, do you need to post? Are you contractually obligated to post? Am I do, do I need to make this video? Well, I mean, if you ask barrel scraping, Dave, listen, I don't come from a long lineage of barrel scrapers. I wasn't born into this dynasty. To not scrape the barrel, okay? It's the off-season, and we've got until July 11th, 2022, to scrape away. Oh, but Dave, there's nothing left in the barrel to be scraped, and I say that's when we do our best scraping, okay? That's what we're talking about here. This was my uh, great-grandfather, Jebediah uh, Neal, uh, who, um, you know... Yeah, actually, he actually scraped the barrel accidentally. He was um, he was trip he was wearing shoes that were a little too big for his feet, and he actually tripped and fell into the barrel. And everyone said, "Oh no, it's all right, it's an empty barrel." And then he got out of the barrel and he realized that he had some residue on him. And people said, "Oh my God!" You know, it was the middle of the potato famine that was going on, um, butchering history right now. And people were so hungry; they they were just so hungry, and there was like, "There's no food left." And he's like, and he just and he tasted it, and he goes, "Oh my gosh." There is food left. It's on the bottom of the barrel. And everyone's like, well, how do we get it? And he was like, well, I could just scrape the barrel. And everyone's like, you just can't scrape the barrel. He's like, no, no, no. I'll scrape the bottom of the barrel. And then scrape he did. He scraped and he scraped and he scraped a little longer. And he provided food and nourishment for all of his family members. And then he became known as Barrel Scraping Dave, uh, Barrel Scraping Jebediah. And then he had a couple of kids and then the lineage went down to me. And then I was like, Dave, it's the off season. There's no content. And then I remembered, what would Jebediah, great, great grandfather Jebediah do? Would he just say, oh, there's no content? Or would he scrape the bottom of the barrel, and then here we are. And then the bottom of the barrel, after scraping it, we found Demi, not Lovato, Demi Burnett, old villain uh, of Bachelor Nation here, with, I don't know, what what is what what design is this? Uh, what is she? She looks like she looks like there's like a bunch of miniature hitchhikers that are going to try to scale her. <laughs> They'll just kind of hook on to one thing or another. Anyway, there she is. Is there a belly button ring? Uh, this is back in fashion. I remember the 90s. You'd go to old, you go to Claire's. Remember you go to Claire's, you just, boop, boop, you get a couple nipples and a, and a belly button ring and then your mom would find out when you're on vacation and she'd get mad. Those were the days. I bet you I'm relating to about one person right now. Someone will comment, oh my gosh, I got my belly button done at Claire's. I went on vacation. My mom got pissed. Yeah, don't wear a crop top and expect your mom not to be pissed. So then Demi posted, she is risen. And again, it's not that offensive. It's a Sunday, whatever, again, you know. But it's like, really? You know, okay, well, look, hey, if you if she loves God and she's and she's religious and she's practicing, I guess, and then she wants to say, hey, I believe that God is woman. You go, okay, well, hey, sure, I could have that conversation. I don't think God's man or a woman. I believe God's a piece of all of us. I believe vicariously we're all connected through a bigger sort of source code and that God is not above but within. That's what I believe. That's where I've come 37 years or 36 years, my birthday's next week. We're going to do a live stream next Monday, May 2nd. I believe that's the day for my birthday, or as in, in two Mondays. So uh, my birthday's May 1st, but um, we'll do a live stream on May 2nd. So nice little Monday celebration. So get your cake out and ready. Anyway, so I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's like, look, if you're not even, if, if you don't even have a stake in the game, why comment something that's going to be controversial? Because it's Demi. And then she writes underneath, which is the more offensive thing, disclaimer, I'm not religious. Now, look, you can believe God's a woman and not be religious. Like, nothing Demi is saying is inherently wrong in my book. It's her opinion. But it's just, I mean, talk about uh, riling up the base. So someone said, Christianity is not a religion because it does not involve humanity's attempt to reach God, but rather God's attempt to reach humanity. Christianity is centered on a personal relationship between a creator God and his human creation. Which you would say if, you know, God created human in his image. God's image was a feisty blonde. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> God's trying to choke me right now. God's, he's like, shut up, Dave. <laughs> you know, hey, listen, folks, God created me in his image too. So he, he uh, you know, clearly God had a sense of humor or could use a better one. His human creation by coming to us in the person of Jesus through the life and death and resurrection, Jesus, a person, is given the way to become acceptable to God who is holy and experienced the true meaning of their life. Well, look, I mean, religion... My, my thoughts on religion are, and of course, what we do with religion is very important, right? Like we, we see someone like Katie Thurston who might not be religious. I don't know what Katie Thurston's religion is, if she has one or if she's spiritual or whatever. But yesterday we made a video about Katie Thurston refusing a six-figure deal with fast fashion company Shein, which of course has tons of human rights issues, the way they make their clothing, it's bad for the environment, and it's child labor and all that. Meanwhile... We then have people that are supposedly have moral fiber in Bachelor Nation that are Christian, Becca Kufrin. Uh, and again, I think Becca Kufrin has moral fiber. I just don't think she realized when she was taking a sponsorship. And then Madison Pruitt, they both took the Shein sponsorship. They both decided to take money from a company that profits off of slave child labor. Now, could they, they could have been completely ignorant to that, absolutely. Um, but I guess, you know, like, um, it just goes to show, like, just by being a a part of a religion doesn't make you any better or worse than anybody else. We have to be free thinkers and have a sort of moral code that we go with. Maybe Demi has that, but we also know Demi just likes to ruffle feathers. That's where she gets her identity from. She gets her identity from bothering people. And I get that. We've all got that younger brother. I've got that inside of me. It's, just, uh, it's too quiet out there. We need to ruffle some feathers. And that's what she does. And she does it well. My religion, demi, demi goddess, someone says. Got the Christians, Catholics all up in arms for this one. They know the Bible, but don't know how to connect the dots with history. Uh, Mama Broly says, are you comparing yourself to God on Easter Sunday of all days? I am unfollowing. You really need to get some help. People commenting unfollowed as if anyone asked. That moment you realize that U.S. non-religious people keep their mouth shut when religious people post about their beliefs. You know, I kind of, and that's kind of where I stand. I, that's kind of where I stand here where you go, look. She's not making any sort of statement that is political. She's not really making any sort of... It's not even really a feminist statement. I mean, it is it is in the sense that she's saying God is uh, God is woman, and, and, and I respect that. But it loses its tax when she just posts it on Easter Sunday. It's like, it's, like, it's like just jumping onto a trending subject. Anyway, so of course, you know me. Why is God not female? You know, I like, to, I like to search both sides of the aisle here, as we do. A group in the Church of England is calling for services to address God as she, as well as he. The question of God's gender goes back to the early Christian church. The Christian church has always had a bit of a problem with God's gender. He doesn't have one, but as that statement demonstrates, it's hard to talk about God without giving God a gender. Call, it, call God they. Oh, you want to piss off some Christians? Refer to God as they, them. <laughs> that don't really... What are you talking about? Uh, I, I personally believe, like I said, God is uh, God is everything. He's all-consuming. How could he be a man if he's all-consuming? He should be everything. To talk, And I'm sure someone's going to be like, well, in Leviticus, it's like, shush, just shush. Just watch the video. Uh, <laughs> you know you know, it's never a good combo when someone's like, in Deuteronomy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making fun of religion, folks. Don't get it twisted. This is interesting. To talk about God, we have to call God something, and avoiding pronouns altogether is cumbersome, as I've just demonstrated again. It seems a bit rude. Ta why, why does it seem rude? Talking as if God was an impersonal force like gravity or inflation, so God has to be he or she. Why don't, rather than say pronouns, why don't we just say God? God is this, God is that. Just say God. As the catechism of the Catholic Church says, God is neither man nor woman, he is God. Well, the Catholics say that he's not, neither man nor woman, so just call him God. Other Christian groups have gone further than this, though. A church in 3rd century Syria seemed to have been in the habit of praying to the Holy Spirit in female terms. All right, there you go. Uh, breaking news, folks. We have it here. The Holy Spirit is a lady. One of their holy books, The Acts of Thomas, tells of St. Thomas presiding over communion service and calling on the Holy Spirit, saying, Come, she that manifests the hidden things and makes the unspeakable things plain, the holy dove that bears the twin young, come, the hidden mother, come and communicate with us in this Eucharist. All right, I don't know. What, is, what does Jesus even look like, right? You know, we look at the translations of the Bible. How white, you know, how white he looks like he's, uh, this, he looks like the, uh, CW version of Jesus. <laughs> oh yeah, Jesus, make him, make him white and give him a five o'clock shadow. The ongoing mystery of Jesus' face. He's one of the most commonly painted figures in Western art. But what do we really know about his appearance? Not much. We know he's from the Middle East, right? So why would we assume he looks like, uh, you know, some of, the, some of these, uh, wait, wait till you see some of the images they have of God. 
What does the Bible say? The Bible offers few cues, clues about Christ's physical appearance. Most of what we know about Jesus comes from the first four books of the New Testament, uh, Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or, what was it? The, what are they? The Beatles? What is that? According to the Gospel, Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in the town of Nazareth in Galilee, formerly Palestine, now northern Israel during the first century AD. We know Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his ministry, but the Bible tells us virtually nothing about what he looked like, except that he didn't stand out in any particular way. We we can all agree Jesus is a guy, right? Jesus is a man. We know that. Whether people believe that he was the chosen one uh, is a different story. But he was a he was a person documented in the world, right? I think we can all agree on that, right? When Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion, Judas is oh boy had to point Jesus out to his soldiers among the disciples, presumably because they all appeared similar to one another. Oh, they all look like now. Look at this, Jesus. Oh, come on. No, <laughs> this looks like Michael Jackson Jesus. This is, <laughs> what? No, that's not Jesus. This this is a boy band. This is, a, you know, a Harry Styles Jesus right here. That's not Jesus at all. What is going on? Oh, boy. What can you do? For many scholars, Revelations offers a clue that Jesus' skin was a darker hue and that his hair was woolly in texture. The hairs on his head, it says, were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burned bronze refined as in a furnace uh it's very poetic we don't know what jesus looked like but if all things that we do know about him are true he was a palestinian palestinian jewish man living in galilee in the first century not the third member of a boy band this is not what jesus would have looked like so it goes on and on some of the earliest known um and by the way, I, you know what? I'm not an expert in any of this, but uh, I do come. I do come from a, a bit of royalty. My step grandmother has a double PhD in art history. She passed about um, about uh, eight to ten years ago, which is which is so sad because she was actually she actually was the type. Um, she had a few artists where she was the renowned expert in. So if they had a painting, say this painting, and they wanted to sort of authenticate it, they would actually go to my grandmother. She, my step grandmother, she was uh, born in Germany. And and met um, my step grandfather, who I never met. He was passed before my parents married. This is a little confusing. Just a little bit about me, right? They met when he was an American soldier, uh, I think stationed in France, and she was working in France, and then of course moved to the United States. So she has a, she had this beautiful German accent and love for art. Now, art, especially. Um, Art history, you know, we don't really value art the way that I think we should in society. We're, you know, society's never been rich, culturally richer than it is now. And yet we're so focused on on, on like maximizing profits that you don't, you don't see people being like, all right, yeah, I'm going to go make it rich getting into art history. But the amount of bandwidth that is needed to study some, some of these amazing paintings and in scripture and all the different uh, artifacts and, and, and relics of our past, you know, it's just so fascinating to me. The restored fresco depicting Jesus and his apostles in the Roman catacomb of Santa Domitia. Um, so, you know, there's different, you know, I mean, but some of these, like, if a painting's from the 1500s, what do we, you know, that, that doesn't that doesn't really mean, you know, when the game of telephones played, that doesn't mean that that's what he would have looked like from the first century. Another rare early portrait of Jesus was discovered in 2018 on the walls of a ruined church in southern Israel. Painted in, painted in the 6th century, so still see, hundreds of years after, it is the earliest known image of Christ found in Israel and portrays him with shorter, curly hair, a depiction that was common to the eastern region of the Byzantine Empire, especially in Egypt and the Syria-Palestine region, but disappeared from later uh, Byzantine art. The long-haired, bearded image of Jesus that emerged beginning in the 4th century AD was influenced heavily by representations of Greek and Roman gods, particularly the all-powerful Greek god Zeus. All right, so boy band Jesus came from Zeus. At that point, Zeus... Jesus had curly hair. We learn something new every day. This is fascinating to me. The point of these images was never to show Jesus as a man, but to make theological points about who Jesus was as Christ, King, Judge, and Divine Son. They have evolved over time to the standard Jesus we recognize. And here's the botched one. Botched restoration of Jesus fresco miraculously saves Spanish town. So they, do you guys remember this? I can't believe this is eight years ago. They had this image of Jesus and they, they hired someone to restore it. And it turned, and then this is the restoration. Yikes. This looks like everyone's Instagram filter when you take a photo and you're like, all right, let's just smack a few filters on it. Next thing you know, you look like botched Jesus. Cecilia Jimenez 
Jimenez, an 82-year-old widow and amateur painter, attempted to restore an almost century-old fresco of Jesus crowned with thorns in her local church in Spain. Despite a valiant effort, the tragically failed restoration went viral, and Jimenez's attempt was met with mockery and scorn. Images of the botched fresco swirled around Twitter and Facebook, inspiring a slew of memes and parodies now found on the internet. But two years later, the village has reassessed their attitudes and turned their ridicule into gratitude. The viral image and memes gifted the rural town with free publicity. 150,000 tourists from all over the world came to see Jimenez's artistic endeavor and visit the sanctuary overlooking Borja. Why are people coming to see it if it's such a terrible work of art? Asked Andrew Flack, an opera lib libertist who traveled to Borja for research on a new pr uh, production. It's a pilgrimage of sorts, driven by the media into a phenomenon. God works in mysterious ways. Your disaster could be my miracle. And if that's not a good way to end this, hey, Demi, your disaster could be someone else's miracle. So just remember, folks out there, that, hey, if we're all made in God's image, we can all try our best and stop judging each other so much about what side of the aisle we're on. Why don't we all just operate from the same side of the aisle? Humanity. Wouldn't that be nice? I'm going live at 10 a.m. today, Pacific time, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'm going to be discussing my wedding planning and some other things. We'll make some content. Hey, it's a fun day. Stick around. Bye, guys.